to the, the order today of the POI 23 is parade, nie, and then clue. We will quickly go through that. You're given a tree, you need to choose such a path that the sum of degrees for all the vertices on this path, your score is the number of edges going out of it, not counting those in the path. I cannot copy that, and that's fine. And we want to say what is the maximum number of those street segments that may have to be closed in order to secure the parade. So you choose a path for a parade, and then you choose streets that touch this parade, but don't belong to it. And the solution is to just do dynamic programming on the tree. Mm. At least I hope so. I didn't read the official editorial. Mm. What happens is for every subtree, you want to know some value. Starting from this vertex and going down, what is the best path? That is path that will have that maximum score. Mm. Score being the number of things that go out of this thing to the sides. Here, one, two, three, four. And then when you have uh, to merge two subtrees, you have score for this subtree, score for this one, to merge them into a parent, uh, you just take out of, from your children, you take the maximum score, let's say that we had here three, four and seven, then we take this guy with seven, and when we extend him to the parent, we add plus two for the other children. Mm, so the score from parent will be score of max child plus two. Mm. And we also consider that th this will be the best, path, the best path from this vertex down. And we need to consider that maybe this vertex is the LCA of a path that may be mm, the optimal path goes through this vertex uh, to some two children. For that we need two best children and we take those their scores plus the number of other children so that the, the number of children minus two plus if there is a parent we also add plus one for parent. Mm, that's that, plus you need to handle a case as well that may be mm, the optimal path can look like like this, ending in a vertex, not going to two children. As a score you should also consider the best child plus the number of other children plus the parent if there is any. This is just a very standard DP. Mm. You can ask questions if you have some. The next problem will be Nie, which is amusing journeys. In this problem, we are asked to count si simple cycles of some size, assuming that all cycles in a graph have the same size. And here we needed some very important observation how graphs look like so that all the cycles would have the same size. Those are very specific graphs. Let's try that. I'm using journeys. Uh, yeah. mm, 
we are given a graph, for example, looking like this. Maybe let's say like that. Um, we want to say if every simple cycle in this graph has the same size, and if yes, count the cycles. Limits are big, almost n and m up to 1 million. I think n was 500,000, but it doesn't matter much. Let's assume that. We are looking then for linear or n log n solution. Mm, and in the graph that I drew, there are only cycles of size 5. So the answer would be size is 5, the number of those cycles is 2. Some other example is uh, this one. Here, every simple cycle without any repetitions has size 4. It goes uh, from this vertex to the other one and then some path back. So here the answer is si size is 4 and the number of them will be in this case I think we should go through two of those five vertices so the number of cycles will be 5 choose 2 which is 10. So this is the answer size 4 number 10 and plus there might be some other things here like this is still a good graph or something that here grows like this but if I add this extra edge the answer is now not all cycles have the same size so we don't have to report the number of them also if here I add this edge even though I create a new cycle of size 5 I also create a new cycle of different size so this red edge is not okay and so is this one the red edges would make the graph bad Sorry, I had to close my windows. Mm. Okay, so here are some examples. Uh, when we talk about cycles, we can simplify our graph a little bit and say that we find the connected components again, uh, like in some previous problem we talked about already and it will turn out that also we need some technique that we covered. Uh, if there is some graph here and there is some other graph here, they are independent. Uh, those three are independent graphs. For each of them we can separately compute something. And generally, we find the connected components. Uh, that is, in where if something like this happens, we also say that those are two separate connected components. So a component is be connected if, after removing any vertex, the graph, this part doesn't become disconnected. So this is one. This is second. And then there can be a vertex that shares multiple B connected components, even multiple ones. Here we have five B connected components. Um, and this makes sense because we are looking for cycles. No cycle goes through a bridge. So if you have a tree, generally B connected components. Uh, give us some tree then every vertex here is a connected component we can do something for each of them separately and just check then if every size of cycle in each of them is the same and if yes take the sum of those from this moment we will focus on just one be connected component and if you try to draw small graphs that have all the um, cycles having the same size you will see that there are only two possibilities 
either it's a cycle like this one or it looks like this no other graph not other no other be connected component can have all the cycles of the same size uh, we assume from this moment that the size of be connected component is at least three otherwise there is no cycle at all those are two vertices or one vertex so if there are at least three vertices in be connected component there is at least one cycle and we want to prove that it must be one of those two forms on the right a cycle or this strange thing that in the polish editorial is called onion for some reason i don't think that it looks exactly like an onion but let's call it an onion or onion shape something like that and every onion is two vertices that are connected by some number of paths of the same length. This is what is an onion. And the proof that only those two possibilities are there, cycle or onion, is very complicated and it uses, um, it uses ear decomposition. There is a theorem that Every be connected component has ear decomposition, right? Yeah. So the ear decomposition was that thing when we start from a cycle, and then, then we append new ears. We take two vertices from already existing shape, and we connect them with a path of not yet visited vertices. something like this and uh, the proof says that if we start from some cycle then if um, if you append just any ear like this one you will for sure create two cycles of different sizes unless you connected two vertices with some extra path like after this addition the three paths that we see here, the A, B, and C, each of them must have the same length because there is a cycle of size B plus A. There is a cycle of size B plus C, cycle of size C plus A. Uh, so A must be equal to B must be equal to C. And then the same thing happens in the next step. When we add a new ear, uh, it can be proved that anything like that will be bad there will be some bad cycle of different size unless we again add this and this is a proof a short proof why a graph must be an onion maybe mm, a very simple onion that is just a cycle not necessarily of even length in onion for sure the the cycle cycle must be equal to two times the distance between those two special vertices this one and this one so here the cycle size is even but if the be connected component is just a cycle itself without an onion this can be odd that's fine we don't care about it mm, we don't have to find ear decomposition uh, the problem here the composition we needed to prove something and here we used the theorem that uh, let's say well-known theorem that every be connected component has ear decomposition and then we analyzed what this what that ear decomposition can look like ear decomposition is a cycle to which we append new ears those extra paths mm. now how what is the solution for this problem? What is the implementation? We find be connected components. This is the first step. Then for each of them, we need to find the cycle size and the number of cycles. How we do it? 
we check if it's a single cycle. If yes, then there is just the answer is one cycle. If this is the other case, the onion, we have k choose two cycles, where k is the number of paths. Uh, we talked about it already before. If there is something like this. Every cycle starts in the vertex on the left, goes through one of k paths, and goes back with one of k paths. There are k choose two possibilities for that, where k is the number of paths between the two. How to find if the connected component is uh, an onion or a cycle? For a cycle, we can just run DFS or whatever from one vertex and go through everything. We should get back to the starting vertex. We could also check if every degree is two. And if this part is connected and every degree is two, then this is a cycle. For, uh, for onion, uh, there should be exactly two vertices with degree different than two, and their degree should be the same. And from one of them, if you start going in some direction, if you took the first edge, then, well, every other vertex, except for those two, should have degree two. So it will be, there will be a one way to go through them. When you start from one of those big vertices with degree bigger than two, uh, you go in just any direction, then you will uniquely go in some way. And eventually you need to get to the other vertex from A to B. If you get back to A, this is not an onion. Uh, then you go from A to some other direction and so on. That's how I would implement it. The editorial, the official editorial said that we run BFS from A and distances should look like that. 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, and then 4. This, forget about this vertex. This wasn't necessary. I mean, this is incorrect. Mm, and then we check that uh, distances look like that. I think they checked that distance to every vertex is smaller that, than distance to the final vertex B, something like that. And it was uh, it was okay. If there is if this is not an onion, if there is something of let's say those uh, graph like this for A and B that have degrees degrees bigger than two. The distances will be one, two, three, one, two. And this is not true that distance for every vertex is smaller than vertex B. But I would just run DFSs from every A, uh, from every neighbor of A, and I expect them to go to B with the same number of steps. Time for questions, if you have any. And everything here should be linear. The complexity is O of n plus m. First to split into be connected components, mm. and then check if it's a cycle or onion. If onion, we also need the path, but the k is. Uh, we don't even need to count paths. K is just degree of one of those two big vertices. This is degree of a. How to split into be connected components? Well, this is... Uh, you need to read about bridges and articulation points. There are, um, there are some methods for that. I will quickly go through that. Uh, I would say this, these are basics. Um, but uh, what what to do for that? We run DFS from every vertex. Then this DFS mm, this DFS has some extra edges that don't belong to a tree. Uh, 
a tree of DFS. Like deleting bridges, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, here it's two vertex connectivity, which means a graph like this. Graph like this, you need to treat as two separate be connected components. So you want to say, um, what do you want to say? You want to say that you remove articulation points, but not exactly. Let me think how to do it. I think still it's easiest to just analyze how do we, how we find bridges with this DFS tree. Let's try that. Mm. This graph on the left would look like this. Let's say here there is starting vertex A. Then we have one. I will draw this with bigger size. I can remove this for a moment. Uh, there is A. Then one vertex second vertex this will be articulation point mm, let's say there this will denote as b three four this is non-tree edge and also from b there is here where this path and this edge. Um, okay, how to handle that easiest? Uh, from for every vertex that is articulation point, every um, because here I want to say that this green thing, this green subtree is a be connected component. And there can be multiple edges here. This is still be connected component. But the thing is, it still grows from this, uh, from vertex B down. So every time when we are in some vertex and we usually have R like low of V to compute bridges and articulation points. If we are in the vertex and we see that uh, among non-tree edges that grow from below this vertex, like that, the one that ends highest ends at vertex B maybe multiple of them. So the parent of this vertex, this is our current V. If low of V is equal parent of V, then we have, uh, then we cut here. And the thing below is be connected component, maybe after we cut some other things, but we cut here. So B will also belong to a B connected component. It will be in at least two of them down, but still we have this part that is up. Or you can just Google how to find B connected components. This will be called uh, two vertex connectivity or two vertex B connected components, which means after removing any vertex, the thing is still connected. And now I guess we move to the hardest problem. Club members, the statement was quite short, but still non-trivial to understand. There are two power N people and something happens. Let's talk with example, maybe. This is the sample test. Uh, no, the first number is n, 
and there are free power and people there are free power and people which is not free power two power n which is in this case equal to eight and the general limit for n is uh, n is up to 19 and so but in our sample there are eight people uh, and there are some relations we know that people 0 and 5 are a pair they are in marriage and 0 is male 5 is female I don't think we here distinguish uh, between um, genders 0 and 5 are a pair 5 1 and 4 are a pair 3 and 6 are a pair 7 and 2 are a pair also um, if two numbers differ by on, by exactly one bit for example 5 and 7 differ by exactly one bit because 5 is 101 one and 7 is 111 one. Um, there are a lot of edges like that and we need to put the numbers, the people, in a circle. This is a good order. 0, 5, 7, 2. Uh, let's draw that. 0, 5, 7, 2, 6, uh, 3, 1, 4. Uh, in such an order that every second pair is the one given in the input maybe in different like maybe in the swapped order and every other pair they are connected with this second type of edges they differ by exactly one bit we need to find any arrangement like that or print no uh, and the subtasks are that there are different tests each with different n so there are tests with n equal to 2, 3, and so on. There, is, there are still some points from brute force for checking all the possibilities. Or some maybe recursive solution, a backtrack, maybe it will work for one more test. Here, there is some funny lemma in competitive programming that not, doesn't always work, but usually does. If the sample tests don't give you a test for which the answer is no, for which the answer is impossible, then it's possible for all possible tests. If they say give any solution or print impossible if there are none, but the sample tests don't show that, then 90% of the cases is that then it's always there is always an answer. And by figuring, figuring out an algorithm for that, or by figuring out a proof that there is always a solution, the proof is basically algorithm. There will be some construction that always works. And it will be like that here. There is always a solution. Mm. How to think about it? Well, when we have bit masks, and we care about two masks being different by ex at exactly one position, it makes sense to um, put everything in hypercube. Zero, zero, zero. Uh, zero, zero, one. Zero, one, zero, zero, one, one. And then the second layer. This will be one one zero one 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 zero one one zero zero where this one one zero one zero zero is behind. Here we go. Uh, this is a hypercube. We are given some edges in the input. Let's say that those from the input I will mark green 
to make them visible in my hypercube. Mm, and it might be a good idea to copy the hypercube because I might want to do something more with that. Okay. Nope. Uh, there are edges between 0 and 5. Like this. 7, 2. Mm, 7, 2. Three six, three and six, and finally four and one. This is quite regular here, and what we're looking for, we are looking for a cycle that will go through all the vertices, such that we alternately have white and green edge. Mm. And here white means those that differ by exactly one. So this type. Sorry for changing the color. Uh, what is uh, one example here of a good path? I think it should be... Let's try that. White, green. White, green. White, green, white, green. This is an example of a good solution. I don't know if it's the same as the one used here, but it works. There's, there might be multiple ones. Now, what we often do in Hypercube, generally when we have a lot of dimensions, is we handle the number of dimensions smaller by one, and we try to combine two things. Mm. More generally, what might happen is when we have, let's say, four dimensions, we have one, one cube, the other cube. We have edges that combine, that connect them. Now this is a hypercube. And the, the idea for a solution is, plus we have, of course, those uh, green extra edges. This is a drawing with which we should work. The idea is for a solution is, uh, split the whole thing into two hypercubes of smaller dimension, this one and this one. For that, leave only edges that are completely inside each of them. Uh, solve this case in some way and then combine it together. That's the idea. Uh, and we will try to execute that. What are we looking for for, let's say, three dimensions here? Uh, generally, what we are looking for in this graph is a Hamiltonian cycle. A cycle that goes through all the vertices. And then, um, after finding such a cycle in one cube, and this one, and then in the other one, we want to combine that in some way. Let's think how. Maybe starting with uh, the base case. If n is equal one, uh, if n is equal two, we have just a square. Now, for this square, we have mm, two edges in the input that are, for example, like that, or like that, or like that. They do not touch each other. Numbers in the input do not repeat, so they uh, give us a matching. The numbers in the input are matching and uh, we want to, um, given this matching, let's say those two, we want to add another matching 
that together they will create a Hamiltonian cycle. Mm, because if there is some graph and we are given edges like this, then to arrange those people mm, along a table, we need to add edges that also create a matching. And they will tell us who from every pair who sits next to this guy, next to this person from some other pair. Mm. Okay. The n is equal to 2 case is trivial. Mm. So let, let's say that this is done. And now using the fact that we can solve version n with some n, we want to solve version with n bigger by 1. And that will not be easy. Mm. As I said, we split vertices into three types, and the edges into three types. Mm. What do I want to copy? Maybe let's work for a moment here. Uh, the edges of first type are those that are completely in first cube, edges of the second type, and there are edges that are in between. What Let's say that those in between, so here those two, are M, like middle. Mm. And by edges, I mean the green edges. So <laughs> those ones that I now mark blue. For some a bit smaller example, to make it easier to see, if we have... Mm, this is not a good example, but if we combine two squares, mm, and the green edges are like this, um, yep, they can be like that, then this single edge belongs to E1, edges that are completely inside the first square, then this thing is E2, edges that are completely inside the second square, and now the two that are that connect them are in set M. Mm. Okay, we want to recursively go to solve this thing, but there is no solution for just one green edge. For a square and one green edge, there is, no there is no cycle that goes here through everything, through all the vertices, and it uses white, green, white, green, white, green. After using green, then white, then what? We need to again use white. There is no cycle. Instead, when going recursively down, to some hypercube of smaller dimension, we find vertices that are connected to those in the mm, other hypercube. Let's say that those two belong to a set V1. So for first hypercube, I find E1, that is set of edges that connect two vertices inside the first hypercube. And I find V1, V1 is set of vertices that they are connected to something from the other hypercube. Uh, then, um, in a moment we'll prove a lemma that the size of V1 is even. So this is even. And then we add some new edges. So, so we take vertices from V1 and for a, mo for a month, let's say, in any way, we connect them to each other into a matching. Let's say we add this new edge, the fake edge for a moment. Now we run our solution recursively for this smaller hypercube with edges from set E1 and also those yellow fake edges. Now for this thing, we have a cycle. The cycle 
is like that or also can be like that we already know that if we go recursively into a smaller thing that have size 2 and minus 1 and the number of mm, the, the, this many vertices and also 2 n minus 1 extra edges and those are those create a matching just like those in the input in the input we are given 2 to n minus 1 extra edges and they are disjoint which means they do not repeat so we are given a matching and we already assuming that we can solve n minus 1 version we want to solve now version with n bigger by 1 uh, so yeah we find this um, cycle let's say this one then for the second hypercube we do the same thing which is we find vertices v2 that are connected to something from the other thing we put fake edges between them to create some matching between them we find um, we find a cycle that goes through white fa white extra white extra where extra means green or yellow and now we want to combine those two found cycles into bigger one by removing the fake edges and instead using those that are in between after we forget about this thing this thing we have something that looks like this and what do we have uh, this connected to this position here yeah we have a cycle mm. And this cycle indeed uses, let's also mark our initial green edges. This one, let's use bigger size. This one, this one, here the diagonal, and this one in between. It worked correctly. Mm. It's green, blue, green, blue, green, blue. I mean, green, white, green, white. Blue was just the whole cycle. <laughs> so on this example, it worked. And we want to understand why it works in general. But first, an easier thing. Why I said that V1 is even? Why we said that V1 is even? Because... Mm. the number of edges in the matching that is given to us the the size of set m must be even so there are those two smaller hypercubes there are some edges Mm, between the two smaller hypercubes uh, and I say that the number of them the number of the size of set M is even because mm, why is that the number of things in every hypercube is even this is even if there are here k internal edges where k is the size of set e1 that then those take care of 2k vertices i mean k edges in total they touch 2k vertices so those those are done and the remaining 2 power n minus 1 minus 2k vertices those are those that need to be connected to the other hypercube so and this must be even for n 
greater or equal to 3. Mm, so, and this is why we can indeed find some magic. Because let's remember the step about fake edges to have a magic. And now let's talk about uh, maybe one more dimension. We have one hypercube here, just cube in three dimensions. Mm, here we are the green edges. There are some, uh, maybe like that. But also this one goes to the other hypercube. This one goes to the other hypercube. This one goes to the other hypercube and this one goes to the other hypercube. Then vertices marked red here. I connect them for a moment in any way with yellow fake edges. And after that, I can forget for a moment about those in the middle. And here I have dimension smaller by one with some matching. I assume that this is given in the input. I want to find cycle here, then get back to the also do the same for the other hypercube and combine the two cycles. The only thing that remains is how to combine cycles. And if we do the combination part in O of n, in O of I mean two to n the size, then the whole complexity will be of 2 to n times n because like if by this you denote let's say that this is um, i don't know uh, x uppercase x then if you have recursion that needs o of x to combine two things and then it goes recursively to two parts and it again does o of x and so on then this is the total complexity uh, so for x equal to 2 to n, this is equal to this. Mm. Just like in, for example, merge sort. Merge sort also starts with the whole sequence, breaks it into two and recursively does something, then combines in linear time. We have here the same principle. Okay. How to mm. combine two cycles into one and how to make sure that it does work and we have one bigger cycle that uses uh, like white green white green white green it turns out that it doesn't always work and we need to smartly choose those um, those yellow edges here if we choose them incorrectly maybe like that there will be no cycle mm. I want to find an example where we will not find the, the answer to show you what we need to look for. And those are two smaller hypercubes and let's say that our edges are mm, all edges are between them. like this if in this uh, in the left square i want to combine uh, i have four vertices v1 that i need to um, i need to put some fake edges between them let's say i do it like that in the other square let's say i do it like this Will everything work now? Because the cycles I found, I find are like that. This one and this one. Now I remove the fake edges. And put back the those in between. Yeah, and I think it's indeed incorrect because I got here 
um, with what color I can mark it with, let's say, white. This thing is one cycle of size 4, and on the other side, I will have the other cycle of size 4. I got two disjoint cycles. One is one is on this side and one is on the other side. Instead of one bigger cycle, things became disjoint because I didn't correctly put fake yellow edges. How to then put the yellow edges? The solution is to, on the first square, when you have those vertices that are connected to something in the other hypercube, uh, connect them with fake yellow edges in any way, let's say this one. And then in the other hypercube, you need to do that accordingly. I almost want to say in the same manner, but not exactly. Here, um, also those are vertices that need to be connected. Mm. And now and there are some edges between them. Mm. And what do we do? We We connect them in such a way, we put yellow edges in the other hypercube in such a way that everything will be a cycle, I think. Uh, no, that's not a good idea. Because we do that before going recursively into two smaller hypercubes. Here we just decide how to put vertices from V1 and V2, how to connect them with fake yellow edges that are temporary so that we could go recursively, find the two cycles in the two, si in the two hypercubes, then remove fake edges and instead use edges that are between the two smaller hypercubes. Mm. Here I know that it's correct to combine, to connect it like this. Uh, is it? Would it be correct here to do it like this and then... It's hard to imagine in more than two dimensions. But later, when we, rem we remove this thing, Instead, use those two. Also, remove this one. We will go like this. Can it create a cycle? Ah, it's hard to think about. I think there is a nice drawing in the official editor, let me pull this up. This is a drawing with which I want to work. Yeah, what happens? I have here two smaller, uh, two smaller cases. Uh, green and red edges are those fake edges that I want to remove in a moment. I want to replace them. Mm, 
with the edges that go in between between the two hypercubes, those that connect the two hypercubes. Let's try recreating this. Mm. So the, the positions in space don't matter. I can just say that on one side I have those vertices, let's say six of them. This this is V1 and this is V2. Those are for, from two hypercubes vertices that are connected to something in the other hypercube. Let's say that let's say that edges are like this. Then I want yellow fake edges to be like that. I think because then mm, uh, because then Let's work with, let's copy this. Mm. After you find some cycle, you don't have this. You find some cycle in the, on the left side. Let's say the cycle looks like this. From this, what re what will remain after removing fake yellow edges is uh, are those edges this one this one and this one then the same thing on the left let's say that it's just like this because yellow will be removed and now we again use the white edges that we removed temporarily and I think we have a cycle yep mm. so this is exactly how we should use yellow edges we choose any matching on the left and on the right we, mm, we use matching that will complete that we know that mm, when we move to the left part, we will have some matching that completes the yellow thing, like this one. Uh, so we know between every two separate, <laughs> how to say that? Mm. I'm thinking whether I have a good intuition for you, like, uh, the way to explain that nicely. Give me a moment, because this is the end of the solution. And you can already ask questions about, I don't know, complexity, what we do in each part and so on. Just I want to find some good explanation, some intuition behind the way to use the yellow edges. Let me first summarize the whole thing. Uh, we are given a graph in some let's say for n equal to three we are given hypercube of n dimensions and inside some matching and what is not connected this one with this one we are given some matching we split it into two parts like let's say one side and the other side uh, we find edges that for every part we find edges that are there but they don't necessarily create a matching. We've, to them, we need to add the yellow fake edges, some edges that connect vertices that, co that are uh, co directly connected with something in the other hypercube. After we put those fake yellow edges, we for sure have two power dimension minus one um, vert edges, these joint edges, so a matching in smaller hypercube. We go recursively there, find a cycle. Do the same for the other hypercube, then remove fake edges and instead use those between two hypercubes. They will give us a cycle. Mm, the remaining thing is when we, there are two things now. 
when you decide about those fa the, those fake yellow edges, you can choose any matching you want in the left hypercube, but in the right one, you need to choose matching that completes that so here like this, if you put that one on the left. Mm. Uh, yep, and the second one is we skipped one tiny detail. It is possible that we make the graph disjoint and that happens if there are no edges between two hypercubes. Mm. I will read the comment in a moment. So if, let's say, the situation is like this, the matching in the input contains those edges, we go recursively to every side and we find, let's say, this cycle and this cycle. We cannot combine them. So instead, when we split into two hypercubes, two smaller hypercubes, Mm, we should split in such a way that there is at least one edge in between, at least one edge that I used to mark M in the middle. Uh, how to achieve that? Just take any edge, if this is, let's say, hypercube from the input, take any edge, maybe might be the first one, and it connects two vertices here, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1. And take any of bits for which those two masks are different. Split into two hypercubes according to this bit. Then there will be at least one edge that is that connects two smaller hypercubes for which you recursively go down. Uh, uh, Zakarin said, after you delete yellow edge, two vertices become connected because they are connected on the left side. Mm. So here, this makes sense because after I remove, say, this one, those two vertices need to become connected on the right. And indeed, the right part guarantees that these two are connected because they are not connected directly with yellow. The cycle that works here in some way, uh, let's say, no, uh, like, let's say this one, mm, it makes those two connected here directly, but that doesn't have to be directly. Maybe this is a cycle found. Mm, and still, those two things, but again, directly. I didn't want that. Uh, what is some cycle here? This one, let's say with this guy, like this. Uh, then those two so vertices, those two green vertices are indirectly connected through this edge. We are here. Mm. Then the thing on the other side is removed. I don't think it's very easy to see. Yeah, I cannot explain that to you very well. What's the intuition behind that? Uh, maybe I will understand it better for tomorrow, then I will tell you. But this is the solution. Mm. Questions? Maybe they explain that shortly here in the editorial. I will take a look. They said the same thing, every removed edge is replaced by a path that is not removed on the right. Uh, 
but this isn't that easy. Like drawing from a mon moment ago shows that mm, those two things aren't trivially connected. Are they? So let's say on the right we have just this thing. Then to go between those two, we have this path. To the right, maybe different color, mm, say red. Right, here, to the left, this one, to the right, uh, here, there, and finally here. Then to finish the cycle, we have that. Yeah, this is the combined cycle, and those two are connected. but with something that goes some, sometimes to the right, sometimes to the left. The tutorial isn't clear about it. Yeah. I think the proof is more complicated uh, that, than the tutorial says but I believe it's correct. <laughs>